Today's lesson is the Fundamental Theorem of Algebra. Our learning objective is, I can use the Fundamental Theorem of Algebra to determine the number of and state the complex zeros of a polynomial function by using the rational zero test, synthetic division, factoring, and the definition of a complex number. So let's take a minute. We have covered all of those topics. Where are you, at least on the topics that support this topic? You remember all of these from the previous lessons? Expert or, oh my gosh, I don't remember any of this. I'm a novice or somewhere in between. Apprentice or practitioner. So the fundamental theorem of algebra states if f of x is a polynomial of degree n, where n is greater than 0, then the function f has at least one zero in the complex number system. So the complex number system means a plus bi. Okay, what was that all about? So a plus bi, so a is the real part, bi is the imaginary part, and together that is called the complex number system. Okay, linear factorization theorem. If f of x is a polynomial of degree n, where n is greater than zero, then the function f has precisely n linear factors. So this is showing the, equa or the equation in factored form, where c1, c2, all the way c to the n are complex numbers. So precisely here means exactly. So I don't have any more, I don't have less, I have exactly in linear factors. All right, let's do an example here. So confirm that the third degree polynomial function f of x equals x cubed plus 4x has exactly three zeros. So third degree means n equals 3, and I see that by my degree here. So confirm means show all those zeros. So I'm going to set my equation equal to zero. So f of x equals x cubed plus 4x equals zero. So I know y equals zero where I cross the x-axis. So the first thing I want to do is factor out the greatest common factor. So I have x in common in both terms. So I have x squared plus 4 equal to 0. Then I set each factor equal to 0 and solve. So x equals 0 and x squared plus 4 equals to 0. So x equals 0 I already have solved. So this is a real zero, does not have an imaginary part. So solving for x for this factor, I have x squared equals negative four. To undo the squaring, I'm gonna take the inverse function, which is square root. So I, whatever I do to one side of the equation, I need to do to the other side to keep my equation equal. So I have x equals plus or minus, and I'm going to rewrite the square root of negative 4 as the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 4. And I know by definition that i equals the square root of negative 1. And the square root of 4 is 2. So rewriting this in the correct order, I say x equals plus or minus 
to i. And since I have a plus and a minus, I have two imaginary roots. I am a g i n a r y, imaginary. So I have one real root and two purely imaginary roots. So I have shown that I have three roots. All right, let's try another example here. It says write f of x equals x to the fifth plus x cubed plus 2x squared minus 12x plus 8 as the product of linear factors and list all the zeros of the function f. Okay, so I am looking at my graph. So if I take this in my calculator, I can see that I have some zeros here and some zeros here. So I know this is at x equals negative 2. And this is at x equals 1. So I want to list these as a factor. So I change the sign. So this is x plus 2 and x minus 1. And at the 0, x equals negative 2, I'm going to cross pretty straight. So I know the multiplicity of this factor is 1. So I'm going to cross the x-axis pretty straight. And at my 0, at x equals 1, I am bouncing. So I know my multiplicity of this 0 is 2. So right now, I see that I have a 5th degree polynomial. So I have five zeros. So right now, if I add up the two that I see, I have three zeros. So I know I have two more zeros that I'm looking for. So when I am writing in linear factors, I want to write with no imaginary zeros. So I don't go down to the point where I see i, and I'll show you where that is and how we show that. The other thing I want to point out is I'm missing that term x to the fourth here. So I'm going to start by seeing what are all the possible rational zeros I can have. And I'm doing that looking at P divided by Q, where P is the factor of the constant, and Q are the factors of the leading term. So the possible factors of 8 are going to be 1 times 8 and 2 times 4. And the factors of 1 are, you know, 1 and 1. So plus or minus 1 and 1. So P, the factors of 8 are plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 4, plus or minus 8, divided by all the factors of plus or minus 1. So P divided by Q. So my possible zeros, I put these all over 1. So my possible zeros are plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 4, plus or minus 8. Those are the possible zeros. So I'm going to use synthetic division. And I'm going to start with the zeros that I see on the graph, where x equals negative 2 and x equals 1. So I am going to start with x equals negative 2. It doesn't matter if I start with negative 2 or 1. I just want to start with one of the 2's that I'm aware of. And I'm going to put the coefficients from my equation. So my coefficients are 1. I'm missing a term, so I need a 0 for a placeholder for x to the 4th. 
x to the third is the coefficient is 1, x squared is 2, x is negative 12, and the constant is 8. So at this level, my degree is 5. These are the constants for the degree is 5. So I'm going to bring down my first term. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. Add down, I get negative 2. Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. Add down, I get 5. Negative 2 times 5 is negative 10. I add down, I get negative 8. Negative 2 times negative 8 is positive 16. I add down, I get 4. Negative 2 times 4 is negative 8. I add down, and I get 0. So I have confirmed that x equals negative 2 is a 0. Okay, so the factor is x plus 2. So at this level, my degree is 1 less because I divided by x, so my degree is now 4. So I've taken care of this 1, 0. So now I'm going to go to my 0 at x equals 1. So at x equals 1, I'm going to start dividing. So I'm going to bring my first term down. 1 times 1 is 1. Add down negative 1. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. Add down, I get 4. 1 times 4 is 4. Add down, I get negative 4. 1 times negative 4 is negative 4. I add down, I get 0. So I have confirmed x equals 1 is a 0. My factor is x minus 1. Now I said I had a multiplicity of 2 at x equals 1, so I am going to use that 0 again. So now I have gone down one more degree, so now I'm at degree 3 here. So I'm going to use my 0 of x equals 1 again. So I'm going to bring down my 0. 1 times 1 is 1. Negative add down is 0. 1 times 0 is 0. Add down and I get 4. 1 times 4 is 4. So I add down and I get 0. So my remainder is 0 again. So I get x equals 1 is a 0. And again, the factor is x minus 1. And I am going to stop here because I don't want any imaginary zeros. So here my degree is 2. So my factors, I want to write this as factors. So my equation is f of x equals, so my first factor was x plus 2. My second factor is x minus 1 with a multiplicity of 2. And then what I have left is my last factor. So this is the squared term. So this is x squared plus 4. And we solved this on the front. And I know that that has three or two zeros with it. So I have one, two, three, four, five. So even though this looks like a multiplicity of one, I know there are two imaginary zeros. Okay, so that was one question. It said, what are the zeros? So the zeros themselves, are x equals negative 2 and 1. And from the front, we know that um, 
we had plus or minus 2i. Okay, let's try another example. Okay, next example. Complex zeros occur in conjugate pairs. Find a fourth degree polynomial function with real coefficients that has negative one, negative one, and plus three i as the zeros. For this example, my leading coefficient, a sub n is one. So fourth degree means n equals four, so I have four zeros. And this is telling me I have three, but it also is explaining that conjugate, complex zeros come in conjugate pairs. So a pair is two. So right now I have x equals one, which is a factor of x minus one, and I have it twice, so I know this is squared. And then standard form, this is um, a plus bi. This is just the bi part. So when I have a conjugate pair, so that means I have um, x, so I have plus and minus 3i, not just plus 3i. So this is telling me to write this, expand it out. So when I have my multiplicity of two for these first two factors, or for the zeros of x equals negative one, for a multiplicity of twice, this is really x minus one times x minus one. I'm sorry. We are doing plus one because my zeros are minus one. Please excuse me on that. I had this factor. So my zero is minus one. So the factors are plus one. There we go. So when I multiply this out, I get x squared and one x plus one x is two x plus two x plus one. So my factor, so I want to write this. So when I'm setting up, what are my zeros? My zero is x minus c. So this is x minus c. And c is, a is zero. And then I have plus three i. So when I distribute my negative one. This is really x minus three i is one zero. And then I have x minus zero minus three i. So when I distribute my negative one, this is going to be x plus three i is my next factor. Okay, so I'm gonna write my equation now in factored form. So this is f of x equals x plus three i, x minus three i, and then I'm gonna bring this factor down, which is x squared plus two x plus one. Okay, so now I'm going to do a double distribute with my complex zeros. So I'm going to do a double distribute here. So I have f of x equals x squared minus 3xi plus 3xi minus 9 i squared and then I need to bring my other factors down x squared plus 2x 
plus 1. So now I want to simplify. So my middle terms total 0. And then I can substitute i squared is negative 1. So this term, negative 9 times negative 1 becomes positive 9. So I'm left with, I have f of x equals, so I have x squared plus 9. And then I'm going to bring this factor down. So x squared plus 2x plus 1. So now I'm going to multiply this out in a multiplication table. You can do it the long way, or I have found that if you make a table, it's actually quite simple. So let, let me show you the table method if you haven't seen it before. So I, it doesn't matter which I do horizontal and which I do vertical, but I have x squared. So I have x squared 2x and 1, and then I had x squared and 9. Okay, so I'm just multiplying these out like a x squared. So x squared times x squared is x to the fourth. x squared times 2x is 2x cubed. x squared times 1 is x squared. 9 times x squared is 9x squared. 9 times 2x is 18x. And 9 times 1 is 9. So I want to combine my like terms. So the only like terms I have are the x squared terms. So when I write this in descending order, I have f of x equals x to the fourth plus 2x cubed plus 10x squared, plus 18x, plus 9. So we got our fourth degree polynomial in polynomial form, standard polynomial form. Phew! All right, so let's do one more example. We're going to add uh, one more complication. So this is kind of wrapping up everything we've done in this unit. So this time I have a cubic polynomial. So cubic tells me I have a degree of 3 with real coefficients that has 2 and 1 minus i as the zeros. And at f equals 1, at f at x equals 1 equals 3. So I have a couple things now. So now I know I have um, two complex zeros. So if I have one minus i, I have the complex conjugate pair. So I have one plus i because these come in pairs. And I am going to have to solve for my leading coefficient with my point. So when I have a 0 at 2, that means the 0 is x equals 2. So the factor is x minus 2. And I'm going to set up my general equation first. So this is going to be f of x equals a. I don't know what that is. I have to solve for that. And my 0 at x equals 2, which is a factor of x minus 2. And then my complex zeros, this is going to be x minus 1 minus i. And x 
x minus 1 plus i. So we just have to write these out line by line and go really slow. All right, so next I want to distribute my negative 1s. So I have f of x equals a times x minus 2. And distributing my negative 1 means I change the sign of what's on the inside of the parentheses. So x minus 1 plus i and x minus 1 minus i. Okay, so I'm going to use the table method to multiply these imaginary factors out. So I have x minus 1 and i and x minus 1 and minus i. And so I'm going to just multiply out x times x is x squared, x times negative 1 is negative x, x times i is xi, negative 1 times x is negative x, negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1, negative 1 times i is negative i, Negative i times x is negative xi. Negative i times negative 1 is positive i. And negative i times negative i is negative i squared. Okay, so now I want to substitute and combine like terms. So I see that I have a negative xi and a positive xi, so these total zero. I say I, that I have an i and a negative i, and these total zero. And I know that i squared is negative one, so negative times negative one, so this is a positive 1. So positive 1 and positive 1 I'm going to combine and negative x and negative x I'm going to combine. So I'm going to write my general equation now. So I'm going to keep writing. So this is f of x equals a x minus 2, and then I have x squared minus 2x plus 2. So this is where I substitute in my point. So I can solve for a. So we said our point is 1, 3. So x is 1 and y is 3. So I'm going to substitute y is 3 equals a, x is 1, so 1 minus 2, and 1 squared minus 2 times 1 plus 2. I get 3 equals a, 1 minus 2 is negative 1. And 1 squared minus 2 is negative 1 plus 2 is 1. So dividing both sides by negative 1, I get a equals negative 3. So I'm going to go substitute this into my equation here. So I get f of x equals negative 3 x minus 2, x squared minus 2x plus 2. Okay, so I am, I just take it one step at a time. So I have it in factored form now. 
Okay, a little bit more. Let's talk about a couple more ways sometimes we like to see these equations expressed. Okay, next one says write the polynomial f of x equals x to the fourth minus x squared minus 20 first as the factor factors irreducible over the rationals. So rational numbers means I terminate or repeat. So what I don't want to see is no imaginary numbers and no radicals. So no imaginary numbers. And no radicals. Okay, so if I factor this, I would say this is f of x equals, so I have a is a 1 here, so the factors of 1 are 1, so I got a x squared and a x squared, and then I want the factors of 20. So the factors of 20 are 1 times 20, 2 times 10, and 4 times 5. And when I, I see that my signs are different, so when I subtract them, I want to have 1. So I know I'm using 4 and 5. So I have x minus 5 and x squared plus 4. So when I multiply these out, I have negative 1. Okay, so this is when I'm saying irreducible over the rationals. So next I can ask to write the linear factors and quadratic factors that are irreducible over the reals. So real numbers include radicals. So now I just want no imaginaries. Okay, so no imaginary numbers. So I have to, I can have radicals. So I know in the second set of factors, I have imaginary numbers, because if I move four to the other side, I would be taking the square root of negative four. So I know I can factor the first factor, so that is going to be x plus the square root of 5 and x minus the square root of 5. So I know it's a difference of perfect squares. And then the last way if it asks me in completely factored form, then that means I do want the imaginary numbers. So this would be f of x equals x plus the square root of 5, x minus the square root of 5. And then from the front, we knew what these factors were. So this was x plus 2i and x minus 2i because we factored these and got plus and minus 2i. Phew, that was a lot.